Hey, how's it, YouTube? So, um, yeah, I just finished troubleshooting this GameCube here uh, from a client that I met when I was doing a Facebook Marketplace buy. And um, I was buying this Wii off of him for super cheap. I just needed some parts from his uh, whatever he was selling so I can finish up some sets that I had. But anyway, um, he told me about uh, a GameCube that he had that uh, wasn't reading discs and he thought it would be the laser. I was curious to see if it would be the uh, board like the one I had the last time that I fixed the last time. And um, I was right, it was the board. I kind of had a hunch because those GameCubes that I have right there, I was supposed to sell some of them or all of them on Facebook Marketplace too. But when I tested them all, it wasn't working. It wasn't reading this. But um, I know beforehand, um, I know all of them are working. In fact, that black one right there was the one that I fixed a couple episodes ago. But yeah, come to know his GameCube also. Um, it's actually the board that's bad. I tried replacing the uh, pickup and it still wasn't working, so yeah. So yeah, this is one of the GameCubes that was on the shelf there that wasn't reading discs. It actually takes about 10 to 15 minutes of warm-up time. Then it will read. So yeah, the time is now 12.48, let's take about 10 to 15 minutes and see if this thing will start reading again. So it's been about 10 minutes now, let's see if this thing starts working. Okay, so now it's 104, and yeah, let's see if this thing is working. Okay, so yeah, so if your GameCube takes about 10 to 15 minutes of warm-up time, it's probably going to be bad cap on the optical board, and you can refer to episode 97 where I fixed this issue. So here's a clip from episode 97 that shows how to separate the board from the housing so you can get to the capacitors. You don't have to desolder the drive motor wires, you can just leave it attached. Obviously we're gonna have to replace the caps and you might as well do a full recap of the board. It's easy to ID the caps. Just ignore the top number, but this middle number is a capacitance value. while the lower number is a voltage rating. So in this case, this is a 100 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitor. While these two are 47 microfarad 4 volt capacitors. But take note that not all SMD caps have the ratings labeled like these. One more thing you need to find is size measurements, namely diameter, and length.
here's the capacitors with their capacitance and voltage ratings as well as their physical measurements. Now that we have the capacitor information, let's head over to Mauser.com, a popular components online store. On the main page, hover over passive components, then head on over to capacitors and click. So now click aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Then aluminum electrolytic capacitors SMD. Select aluminum electrolytic capacitors once again. Then your desired capacitance value. The desired voltage rating. And now the desired diameter. And now click the in stock box. Lastly, apply filters. At this point, you'll have a list of the capacitors with the essential specs. Make sure to double check the specifications. Sometimes the seller's website information is a little off. Like here, it lists the length as 5.5 millimeters and the height as 7.8 millimeters. So refer to the data sheet to confirm the information. And we can see in this diagram how length is measured. And this shows us that the 220 microfarad 4 volt capacitor is actually 5.8 millimeters in length and not 5.4 millimeters as listed by Mauser. Just click back on your browser to change the search specifications. These are the caps that I chose the last time around. If any of these are out of stock, just get one with similar specs. Bear in mind you can check the data sheet to see if they are high temp rating, low impedance, low ESR, audio quality, power supply rated, or CPU rated caps. Since the caps do not have part identification markings, we cannot say if any of these are low ESR caps. This in reference to the original caps on the optical board. Since these caps are on the optical board, I don't think you need any type of special performance capacitor. And these worked fine for a couple hours on the previous fix that I did. So yeah, I got the caps ordered, but in the meantime, we can work on this. This is a Dreamcast that I've been working on for a while now, but if you follow me on Twitter, you'd know all about it. I originally cooked it black. I clear coated it, but the clear coat reacted with the logos and made it hard to see. Since I don't have a laser printer that can do white, I painted it a lighter color and made black decals. So naturally I botched the paint by cutting the decals while on the console. So yeah, I had to repaint some stuff. But let me know in the comments what you like. Either the black buttons here, or the silver ones from the previous time. So while I wait for the capacitors to come in for the GameCube, I'm gonna show you how to make and apply the decals for this Dreamcast for the next episode. <laughs>